What is your relationship with truth? I see truth as a defensive strategy to keep one's effectiveness in the world intact. Where do you find yourself in the landscape of truth? There's a tremendous asymmetry between truth and untruth, or truth and bullshit. Bullshit is a lot easier to arrive at than truth. Truth, truth is a difficult path and it's fraught. Do you wish for absolute truth? I often think that the, the quest for absolute truth is oftentimes the height of follies. Welcome. I am Andris Kulikauskas, the host of Math for Wisdom, an investigatory community for absolute truth. This flows out of my lifelong quest to know everything and apply that knowledge usefully. Your, your questions are way broader scope than mine. What's the relationship between truth and wisdom? Maybe they're not related at all. Wisdom is knowledge of everything, and as such, is the content of absolute truth. Mathematics is the study of structure, and as such, is the form of absolute truth. Math for wisdom relates the language of wisdom and the language of mathematics. What do wisdom and math reveal about absolute truth? With this video, welcome to Math for Wisdom. I am overviewing where we are seven months since my first video, Introduction to Math for Wisdom. Since then, I have uploaded 19 videos. We have about eight active participants. I invite you to join the Math for Wisdom discussion group, which is the hub of our activity. You will find the link at the description of this video and also at mathforwisdom.com. You can also find me tooting at the Mathstudent server and participating at Discord servers such as for Carl Jaimungle's Theories of Everything podcast and for the Summer of Math Exposition. In 1993, I received my PhD in mathematics from the University of California at San Diego. I studied math with the hope that it would be useful for expressing a new science for the knowledge of everything. Over the years, I have documented an abstract language of cognitive frameworks, which makes sense to me, but others do not comprehend. The way I am thinking is very unusual. What could I do to be understood? Recently, I have recognized that these cognitive frameworks appear in advanced mathematical thinking, some of which I need to master. Such concepts include the Yoneda lemma and the junctions in category theory, bot periodicity in algebraic topology, Mobius transformations in complex geometry, and the four classical families in Lie theory. I believe that the essence of these concepts could be understood by, for example, a teacher of high school math, such as Kirby Erner, or a motivated person with a high school education, such as Bill Paul. I'm an amateur at math. Um, slowly, I've been getting more of a grasp of uh, the subjects that have been discussed. I have mapped out the learning paths that I wish to explore in the coming year. My goal is not to learn math for its own sake, but to show how advanced math runs up against the same limits of imagination which are described by cognitive frameworks, such as divisions of everything. I am trying to communicate clarify, validate, and apply such frameworks. What I've learned from our interactions is that I myself seek absolute truth, but personally, 
We all have very different relationships with truth. Children are in truth. Mm -hmm. You know? So, which means that existence itself is truth. In your life, how does truth work? You know, like what is like okay. the, what is your like view on you know like uh, practically like you know how you deal with the issue of truth in your life I would say there's a lot of relativity to it uh observer bias whatever I mean I I don't obviously you're an absolute truth guy and I don't have a very structured or defined category for that term Mm -hmm. um, I, I, I would generally defer to things being relative to one another so if you've got 10 opinions they all have some value uh, at some level um, maybe I'll be convinced of absolute truth by you mm -hmm. and arrive at it it has something to do with time and place for me. So uh, today is one thing, someone's perspective from a previous era or uh, cult, from a different culture. What is all, it's, it all has value. Uh, I will talk about that as I introduce our current participants, starting with myself. Along the way, I will discuss the videos I have uploaded and the ones I intend to create with your participation, your help, and support. For me, the most important videos are in the playlist called Wondrous Wisdom, where Wondrous rhymes with my name, Andrus. Wondrous Wisdom is the name that I give to the language of cognitive frameworks, which I also call simply the language of wisdom. Here is my story. As a six-year-old child, I resolved to know everything and apply that knowledge usefully. But this is very dangerous. So I engaged God. Give me the freedom to think whatever I need to think. Maybe you exist and maybe you don't. Maybe you are good and maybe you aren't. But regardless of what I learn, I will always believe in you. Then I proceeded to learn everything I could. In high school, I came to realize that in the quantum world, reality fades away. So that must not yield the knowledge of everything. It must be there where we are most able to find it, but nobody wants to look, which is the study of wisdom. It's really noticeable that you uh, have a positive attitude about it. Oh, good. And this is one of the things which will help people to go over the uh, shaky bridges they have to yes. <laughs> Shaky because not because not necessarily because of their construction, because even if their construction, like if you go over a, a bridge made out of glass, right? If you look down, you feel a little bit. Uh, I think I think it's not. Anxious, and I mean, the the, happen, the the bridges you know? may be shaky, but I mean, I think like you just said, the real well, issue yeah, is that I mean, the re the real issue is that the altitude, you know. I'm walking yeah. on bridges that are very high, you know, like, you know, exactly, I'm doing yeah. things that could anger God, you know, <laughs> and so if people yeah. don't believe in God, even, you know, the whole thing is just very, you know. In 1982, I entered the University of Chicago. We were encouraged to ask the big questions in life, but we were discouraged from thinking that we could ever answer them definitively. All knowledge was relative. Back then, in academia, many subjects were taboo, such as consciousness, causation, the reason why in biology, the emotions of animals, prayer, wisdom, 
and the reality of God. To this day, arguably the greatest taboo remains the concept of absolute truth. I had to develop this concept on my own by documenting the limits of my imagination. The video, preliminaries, building blocks, frameworks of perspectives, explains the fundamentals, starting with the concept of everything, and then proceeding to divisions of everything into two or three or four or more perspectives. We are in a difficult spot because we use a linear medium like video or mm -hmm. text. And part of the structures are not linear. Technology of uh, communication is an extra complication. And so I, I very much like uh, diagrams and two-dimensional representations. So, so maybe a, a good uh, uh, thing is I, that you do a bit of theater about it. You like which, that, or yeah, we, 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 because it 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 gives a chance for people who uh, have no real way to relate to what you want to say on mm -hmm. a, on a content level, especially if they are new to that. Mm -hmm. So when they observe your emotion, then this right. might create some resonance which works even if there is only a very fragile um, level of actually uh, knowing the terminology and the methods that sure. you are introducing. We are familiar with the argument between free will and fate. Rather than get sucked into this argument, we can simply observe that these two perspectives complement each other. We need two perspectives for matters of existence, as when we ask a question whether or not this chair exists, but then refer to a definite answer. If it exists, then it exists, and if not, then not. In trying to explain this framework, I have found it helpful to suppose there are two puppets, one which argues for free will and the other which argues for fate, so that together they make up the theater of the mind. Thinking abstractly, we can say that one puppet claims that opposites coexist, black and white, whereas another puppet claims that things are all the same, they are just shades of gray. The point of Math 4 wisdom is to recognize that this framework occurs in mathematical thinking. A surface may be orientable, as in the case of a sphere, which has an inside and an outside, so that opposites coexist. Or a surface may be unorientable, as in the case of a Mobius strip or a Klein bottle, where we can't distinguish inside and outside as it is all the same. This mathematical example helps define, clarify, validate, and apply the framework. The division of everything into three perspectives is the learning cycle of taking a stand, following through, and reflecting. This is the scientific method. We state a hypothesis, conduct an experiment, and observe the results. Wherever such a three cycle appears in mathematics, I suspect that it is modeling the learning process. I think of the Jacobi identity, and I contemplate how a Lie algebra is the structure of learning for a Lie group. In homological algebra, I imagine the meyer vietoris sequence as describing how the learning cycle proceeds dimension by dimension. The division of everything into four perspectives distinguishes four levels of knowledge, whether, what, how, why. And I think one of the greatest errors people make in communication is they quickly assume that we're all speaking the same language, whereas my model is more, we all speak a private language 
and don't realize it. We think we're communicating, but everyone says God or true or whatever in their own world. And so a first step when you're communicating is to do some translation. I could appeal to philosophers such as Plato, Aristotle, Kant, Hume, as practically every philosopher speaks of these levels in their own private language. However, my goal is not to create my own private language, but rather to foster a language of wisdom within a scientific community. That is why I will be creating videos about the Yoneda Lemma to show how it functions as a knowledge switch for these four levels. And more generally, I will show how these divisions of everything appear in exact sequences, where the perspectives correspond to maps. In particular, a short exact sequence has four maps, and I argue that they express these four perspectives, whether, what, how, why. How can I show that such cognitive frameworks are real? I need to do this within a community. And that is coming together through the Math for Wisdom discussion group, which you are welcome to join. Kirby Erner is the first person to engage me there. He majored in philosophy at Princeton with a focus on Wittgenstein and grew to champion Buckminster Fuller as a visionary who straddled the humanities and sciences. We kind of surrendered our ability to be social engineers. In fact, that very term is demonized because it's a little bit too close to what we actually would need, isn't it? So I've been having some good times over on the Math for Wisdom list. I've got the ideas pretty carefully expressed, what we've been going on about here on the YouTube channel, the link between Freud and Bucky, invisible is more important than the visible, discussion of the unconscious as well as the conscious, those kind of things. That's synergetics. Kirby teaches high school students to program in Python and broadens their thinking by contrasting earthling math based on cubes and independent dimensions with Martian math based on tetrahedrons and interdependent dimensions. You can see his influence on my video. 120 degrees plus 120 degrees equals 90 degrees in Dinkin diagrams teamwork in creating learning paths. This is the first in a series, what is geometry? I am showing how we can understand the classical Lee families in terms of very concrete facts. Kirby gave a presentation at the 52 Living Ideas community and our interaction there brought John Brett into the Math for Wisdom discussion. John and his wife Yoshini are the developers of a cognitive framework emergently, which facilitates understanding and decision-making and is based on the tetrahedron. Emergently expresses metaphorically how water unifies, fire energizes, earth solidifies, and air transforms. We're guiding them from simple silo mentality to reality. So 2D is very important. But 3D makes the, you got to get the, we've got to get our learners' jaws to drop and go, oh, God, you had a cube in your hand and you just folded it up and this is the minimum structural system in the universe. The fact that John and I have worked so personally with cognitive frameworks helped us understand each other in ways that I had not succeeded with Kirby. Discussion between the three of us made apparent what I should have realized long ago, which is that we all have different relationships with the truth. I've sort of finally realized that um, actually our brains only work in metaphor. That three-dimensional image is actually captured by a two-dimensional retina. Our, our eye ca captures a two-dimensional two version of it, and then our brain constructs our consciousness out of that. So it's all metaphor in there. It's trying to say it's like this, you know, out there. And so when you say absolute truth, to me, what you're, you're saying is you're going to create words or mathematical symbols that are metaphors for what we experience, the real experience. 
And then when I look at what we can experience and what we can't experience, there's this kind of what, uh, this tuning where we can tune in like a radio. You know all of those frequencies are there, but you can only tune in to one frequency at a time. So our tunability understanding of the of of reality of everything that's going on is only very narrow so there's a lot <laughs> huge amount that's going on that we have no sense of in the humanities like we look up to the word metaphor it's not like mm -hmm. oh it's just a metaphor and i always wonder where that should go in math like why do mathematicians not use the word metaphor more and like i would ask pointedly we all understand three orthogonals, you know, mutually perpendicular. Mm -hmm. And then they say, well, here's a fourth orthogonal, but you can't really visualize it, but the math works out. So it's, so why isn't that a metaphor or an analogy? So, it's like mm -hmm. higher dimensional math is an analogy on three dimensional math. Is that a put down? Is that saying, oh, it's not really true. It's just a metaphor. No, it's really true. And it's a metaphor. For John, Truth is metaphor. His position is understandable because it allows him to apply emergently as a useful metaphor without having to defend it as literally true. For Kirby, truth is a defensive strategy that keeps him from being attacked as a fabricator, which liberates him to be both truthful and creative. For me, Truth is subsumed in absolute truth. And so my strategy is to center myself in absolute truth and thus align at the source with God's vantage point. Our various relationships with truth suggest that we identify with different locations on the landscape of truth, distinguished by the layers of reality inside ourselves and out in the world, whatever we take to be real. And so we take up distinct strategies accordingly. Each of us has valuable experience by which we can try to appreciate the entire landscape of truth. Two years ago, I had the opportunity to study quantum physics with John Harland, and we talk every week or two. We became friends in graduate school. He is a functional analyst with a passion for physics, and you will encounter him in many videos. But I know that if I ever make the progress that I'd like to, that I'm still gonna feel like it was, you know, there, the landscape that I really wanna see is still, I'm still blind to, you know, like, in other words, I'm, I, I really feel like there's, especially in physics, I think that there's just a, a just a paradigm shift out there you know, that is possible. For John, truth is a hard journey where we often are wrong, yet by correcting our misconceptions, we can advance. You know, the easy way out is is to not seek the truth and to not, to not demand the truth. Um, and, you know, I have a lot of ideas. I've had a lot of ideas in physics and math that turn out not to be mm -hmm. true, you know. And it was hard work and hard effort to find out that that avenue was not going to was not going to be realized. You know, I used to sit there and, you know, as a graduate student and have all kinds of amazing ideas, and it turns out that, um, you know, part of being a mathematician is realizing that all these amazing, brilliant ideas you have, you know, the great majority of them are just absolute trash. They're they're just not true. It's very easy to to conjure up ideas that are very fascinating and, and interesting and wouldn't that be great and very hard to actually follow that path to completion. Or, you know, uh, it's also emotionally very difficult to realize that, that those things are not true. Sometimes you, sometimes the progress, the real progress is in showing that something is not true. Oh, I can abandon that whole stock of ideas and go up this other one now. In studying Schrodinger's equation, I became interested in the combinatorics of the orthogonal polynomials, for my PhD was in algebraic combinatorics. Physicists seem to think that these polynomials are simply tools they use, whereas I imagine that they encode what nature has to say. Indeed, the combinatorics of orthogonal Schaeffer polynomials 
is very suggestive, particularly their fivefold classification, which I think accords with five zones in the scattering of particles, but especially with the division of everything into five perspectives for decision making in space and time, whereby every effect has had its cause, but not every cause has had its effects. And so there is a critical point for deciding. And one of your ideas really did inform uh, an inquiry that I was on. Like it really, you know, it the idea that there's really only two time space time frames that are relevant. Um, mm -hmm. Like that was kind of a big thing for me to, mm -hmm. like, you know, relativity theory. We have to like make sure everything is consistent in all space time frames. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. You know, I mean, the Lawrence group is infinite, you know, so like, you know, so relativity theory, you got to really be careful that any possible observer will agree with you with this translation right. made possible by, by relativity theory. Um, but it occurred to me that um, in quantum mechanics, it might only be two. In the playlist for the five sum, you will find presentations some technical and some informal. You will find me tutored by John and also by experimental psychologist Xu Hong Ju. Theoretical physicist Thomas Gaidosik also joins us sometimes. He teaches quantum field theory and general relativity at Vilnius University. Truth is something that compels me to follow what I recognized as truthful to implement it also by trying to do it as good as I can. So it is like the Kantian imperative that you should do it because you recognize this is the truth. And then there's no way around anymore. Every month he sets aside an evening where for four hours I share with him the progress that I'm making in my research on theology philosophy, mathematics, physics, and personal growth. I think this, this talking is meaningful. It gives me a sense of usefulness, a sense that I do understand some, that maybe I can help some. I think that this uh, talking itself is the meaningful part. It's sometimes the outcome is understandable sometimes it's not yet understandable but having this communication and being to some extent challenged to follow the thoughts is something that i think by itself is worthwhile and i like to do it and we also pray together again i mean this commander becomes only sensible if i can say i can have a personal relationship with truth but this personal relationship I have usually with another person. So the truth has to become a person which in faith, yes, I would formulate it like that too. Because Christ was saying, I, I mean, I'm the truth. His deepest value in life is awareness that he is loved by God, where this love is the gift and key to all of reality. Because my main goal is not to find mass or to find wisdom but to live out of the fullness of god and for that i'm trying to think better how i'm receiving correctly and can give away to others what i receive so in that sense this I would say Project Math for Wisdom in some way enlightens me, is interesting, but not the primary goal. And I feel that when I try to push in some directions there and not just listen and reflect on it, that I'm putting myself into the center where I want to put rather God and listening to him into the center. So... Thomas appreciates my theological explorations, as in the video series, Wondrous Wisdom, where I imagine a top-down overview from God's perspectives, as in my videos, Defining God in Human, 
and God does not have to be good. I think that's the most worthwhile part in our discussions. It's mm -hmm. for me what really is an important question where I am glad that you talk, that I can listen, that I can give comments, that I can give remarks, and that you, to some extent, sometimes also treat my remarks seriously enough that, uh, I mean, this is not convincing to me, and then, okay, yeah, it doesn't have to be. Maybe you find other arguments or not, but I agree that this concept of absolute truth is, I think, something that is not only needed, but also that has to be around in order for us to try to live according to what we should do. So according to our ethics, according to our, in that sense, belief. And without this part in this belief, it's, I mean, it's not, everything becomes in some way, you could say relative, but relative in a bad way. So I was happy to introduce John and Thomas so that John could present his original research in quantum physics, which was meaningful for both of them. I think what he does is in some way amazing and it's necessary to include it into the, to some extent, the learning of, to some, I would say our total community. Because if people with, if there are no people like him, nobody asks, is there a way to understand it in a certain, to understand physics or to understand the mathematics that is used in a certain pure way? And only having mathematics as a usage, as a tool, is maybe not enough. I'm likewise learning from our participants that our different levels of mathematical knowledge and our various situations in life can help us think fresh as to the meaning of math, wisdom, and truth. I think your wisdom is exercised most as you expand and like try to manage different people who you've never met and have them all kind of, uh, you know, like herding cats, as they say, it's an impossibility. Right. But I think that will challenge your management capabilities and that's where your wisdom will shine through less in your mathematics and more in your ability to manage people by the way i'd never heard of or met brett or yoshimi before 52 living ideas and then they're joining your group that was not at my instigation so i'm meeting more people who are into like buckminster fuller i think it's really a worthwhile endeavor having this type of talk discussion especially when also other people join and have their thoughts and discuss about them. I mean, I see how many wonderful people are around that have maybe different thoughts than I, but still try to understand and contribute. And I'm glad that I can listen to them. But what is the practical use of wondrous wisdom? In the context of the group, I'm inclined to understand wisdom as some kind of philosophical thinking, especially when used for real life and society problem solving. The general idea is that God does not have to be good, which means that we have to face hardships if we are to grow and learn and live forever here and now. You've often talked about uh, the logic of God. And that's an interesting subject for me. How, uh, how things lead to God. Our hardships show that we can choose to be good, let go of ourselves, and care about others. And also, we can choose to think outside of the system we find ourselves in, from God's vantage point. I value a quality in people that they can see themselves from the outside. I call that self-awareness. Mm -hmm. So to the extent that your way of thinking, your brainwashing of yourself, your self-programming has created a way for you to see yourself 
from multiple points of view, I think that's a good thing. And I wish you more power to that. It's like, go for that. That's good. You know, that's wise to be able to see yourself from the outside. I hope your system does that for you. Well, I think what I, I, I do a little bit more in the sense that like, what I do, you know, is I consistently, you know, bang my head against the wall in different ways, basically like a blind person, you know, I'm walking through these uh, prison of my mind, trying to say, well, what are the possibilities? What are the perspectives possible? And if I could find a new one, you know, I, I would be glad or, or at least curious or wondering, you know, but mostly I can't, you know, simply like I keep walking back to the same rooms. I keep noticing, oh, I've been in this room before, you know, because Specifically, this is detailed by four frameworks by which we address our body's needs, our mind's doubts, our heart's expectations, and our will's values. For example, we can make explicit the life of our heart, not just our basic emotional responses, but a language of thousands of moods, as investigated in my video, A Geometry of Moods evoked by Wu Jue poems of the Tang Dynasty. In terms of wisdom, like I think of the Dalai Lama as a very wise guy. He's mm -hmm. wise, but what he preaches is stuff like you said, that it's not super clever. We can all relate to be of a, have a kind heart, you right. know, be loving in your soul. Don't be like, you know, like Nietzsche, I learned from Nietzsche that like resentment, if you have an axe to grind all the time, some getting back at somebody, if you're vengeful in your mind, if you're revengeful, these things to me are the opposite of wisdom. To be nursing a grudge is like the opposite of being wise and stuff. Six Mobius transformations, inversion, shear, rotation, dilation, squeeze, translation reshape the boundary between self and world as if we were circles on a sphere. If you could know anything, what would you like to know? Mm, well, I, I share the ambition to make sense of how things relate. And um, I, I've always been uh, interested in many areas of mass. And so uh, I always uh, wanted to unify perspectives. And so observing other people try to unify perspectives and what might be the reactions of other people in the in in this uh, process are kind of uh, interesting for me because i i see how difficult it actually is to arrive at a common language and a common understanding the intelligence of our mind is made explicit when we address our doubts with counter questions an example is given by the video how do you know that you are not a robot. Where we can reply to this doubt with the counter question, would it make any difference? A lot of people think their robotism is just in their behavior and they don't think that the thoughts that come up are also very reflexive and robotic. We talk about a train of thought. You've got this car, then this car, then this car, and they always come as a train. So if you would accept that your thinking is highly robotic, I would say it is, but that's a good thing. It's like, it's very automatic. You don't well, have okay. to- Okay, but, but are we defining, anymore. so first of all, what I'm trying to say is that- I'm saying you're a robot. Well, you can say what you like, thing. but I'm trying to- I I'm say it trying. with admiration. You're one of the better programmed robots out there, perhaps. Well, I guess I'm trying to say how I've self-programmed myself. Yeah, yeah. And brainwashing to me is a good term. You should wash your brain every week. Mm -hmm. So so what I'm trying to say is that uh, maybe I am, you know, like to take your language, let's say, right? Like, so maybe I am programmed, but maybe also I am self-programmed. Maybe so. Maybe there's a chasm between the two. Do you see? Like, maybe. See, so I'm talking about that. So so all of a sudden, that kind of gives rise to the type of structure I'm talking about. You see that there's... So, for example... The self-programming part, it's like my free will part. Like I can self-program myself or not, you know. 
I have a, you know, I have a, it's self-programming. I have a choice in a certain sense. I have some latitude. The external part, I don't have any latitude about. You know, there's a certain part like where I do have latitude. There's a certain part I don't. I have documented a framework of eight counter questions and have applied that as a peacemaker to systematize the ways of loving our enemy by looking at everything from their point of view. Be straightforward. Act step by step. Be vulnerable. Let them win. Let them teach us. Stick to our principles. Have something to share. It's great if you can uh, be truthful and uh, I reserve the right to have a mental inner reservation if I'm forced to uh, relate to people who are not interested in truth, but only in their dogma. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I think it's very, very important that you have your inner system of truth and be able to um, separate it from what you present to the outside that's actually a matter of mm -hmm. matter of survival in many cultures that they basically operate on the assumption that people have to adopt what they perceive as true as true and are otherwise threatened with all kinds of uncomfort mm. i created a video Bring peace to Russia and Ukraine to suggest this approach along with 12 practical activities. Subsequently, Ames Rossman and I wrote the text for the video, Call for Essays, Vision for Our Future, which was read by 11 people from four continents. Write or record an essay entitled Vision for Our Future that you would like to share with everybody. If you're interested about writing an essay or making a video about vision for our future, you are welcome. And here are some of the instructions that you can follow. Please post your essay on the internet and share it with your friends. Help others publish essays. Write or record your essay in any language. I'm recording and publishing video essays to contribute to global dialogue so that individual Russians and Ukrainians would likewise speak out, interact, and seek solutions. Additionally, Silvia Spokštas and I organize workshops for independent thinkers at the prison in Elitus, Lithuania, not far from my village home. <laughs> And we are including prisoners in this dialogue. What is your vision for our future? It just feels so far beyond me that I, I, I'm willing, I'm willing to limit myself to what I can, what I can do. I have tried before. I have tried um, thinking in broad scope ways before, but it all boils down to when I when I try to do anything with it, it all boils down to these little picky unish right patients in the end you know that's where i live that's what that's where i feel i i i have some i have some manipulating skills right whereas the you know trying to actually grok the big picture you know you know much like you do this right you you actually have these broad scope theories that and this is you know you 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 say that i've got like some superpowers that you don't have well you have a superpower that i don't right. have. I don't have the confidence. I don't have the hubris. I don't have the intellect to to be able to approach um, scientific progress that way. How can we work together to recognize, clarify, develop, and apply this language of wisdom? We can collect, sort, and systematize the ways of figuring things out in all manner of disciplines starting with mathematics. My most popular video, Surface Structure versus Deep Structure, is the first in a series, 
math epistemology, where I will present 24 ways of figuring out how to solve mathematical challenges. I have sketched out similar systems for physics, biology, neuroscience, chess, and the business innovation games known as game storming. I welcome support from Patreon supporters so that we could work out the epistemology of their favorite disciplines. Similarly, I have mapped out my own ways of figuring things out. I've sketched them out for Jesus and for the Goan of Vilna. Whose thinking would you like us to flesh out with an epistemological portrait? I want Math for Wisdom to be a supportive environment for my own investigations and yours as well. In the series Wondrous Wisdom, I am leading up to presentation of my current research to understand the wisdom in our life experiences. Each of us has a unique treasure of experience and a unique vantage point. A minority, a, a few people will be curious. I'm curious, I'll keep uh, uh, mm -hmm. trying to put together in my head what your cognitive frameworks is all about. Like right. I explore your website, I hear what you're saying and I'm trying to put together on my end a model of your model so that I know what you're talking about. Please ask yourself, what is your deepest value, which includes all of your other values? What is a question that you don't know the answer to, but wish to answer? What is your relationship with truth? I don't. And yeah. so, and I'm not so sure I have to believe either. I'm not. I'm not right. And so that's why I call it religion. You see, like yeah. because it's a you know your religion that doesn't it doesn't bring you there because you're at a different part of that landscape of truth. And so where you're at, like this whole notion of redirecting, right? Like you know that you see this is how we could redirect everything. You know the point of inflection, let's say, right? Whereas like I'm trying to look in the big picture. Say, I don't have a clue, like you know how you're going to redirect that, but like I can see where I think it could be going. Your answers will help us appreciate each other and work together on the basis of truth and even absolute truth. If you like this video, if you subscribe to this channel, then you make Math for Wisdom more visible to others. Thank you also to all who support Math for Wisdom financially through Patreon. Welcome to Math for Wisdom an investigatory community for absolute truth.